Hello, this is Liam Gillespie from Stranger Liquids. This is going to be our second tutorial on blow plates. To create a blow plate, you need to combine immiscible fluids in a plate. In our case, that is going to be water, oil, isopropyl alcohol, and dyes. Some people prefer flat bottom dishes for blow plates, like a petri dish, but we found this method works well in all plates. As the oil and dye mix, we can already see some very cool three-dimensional motion happening. I'm going to build up the plate now with more dyed oils to increase the contrast and definition of that motion. Now we'll add some more water to give us the ability to manipulate the fluids in the dish and free up some oils from the side. It looks good, but there's too much white light to really use this for our purposes. Let's get some more dye in the mix to really develop the contrast we need for a good blow plate. Make sure not to blow too hard or in too many different directions, or else you can really quickly ruin a plate before it gets where you want it. After giving this one a good swirl, you can see how this method creates a similar marbling to a traditional blow plate approach. The problem with this approach, as you can see, is after too much mixing of dyes and swirling of fluids, they start to homogenize. The curious light show artist will find ways to play with anything, and by adding a solvent, we can make some very interesting displays using the increased contrast and depth brought by the dye mixture. After some time, the dyes, solvents, water, and oil will begin to interplay as a chemical reaction takes place in front of our eyes. This step is probably my favorite, and it can be extended by monitoring the behavior of your plate and adding fluids to the mix in small amounts. Up until this point, everything we've used in this plate is widely available in the United States and online. Hobby store candle dyes mixed with pharmacy grade mineral oil and isopropyl alcohol in distilled or filtered water. Now we are moving to a more serious dye. I'm not going to get too deep into the chemistry, mostly because my research is limited by what info dye makers are willing to put out. But something in the blue dye I am using here is strongly ionic and bonds with the water molecules more readily than the isopropyl alcohol. This pulls the alcohol out of solution and begins the process of creating additional layers in the plate. I've now added oil dye on top of this third layer, which it must move through in order to reach the oil. This prolongs its life in the plate and creates a lot of cool effects before the dyes finally mix.
The end look of this plate leads me to believe we are now potentially approaching what is referred to as a sugar plate, both due to the resemblance of the final look and the implied chemistry of sugar molecules interacting with water and dyes in solution. The marbling and layering begin to interplay as the alcohol comes further out of solution with the water, creating a textured, brushed look with tons of depth. The final look of this plate may not come through well on your projector. Generally, this type of plate would be used best with a metal halide projector or for digital photography. But all the steps leading up to it look great on an overhead. As we wrap up the creation of this blow plate, you'll find it's best used as an introductory element to a show, building up the plate in front of the audience live to engage and enthrall them in your light show. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and uh, subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions about what we're doing or how you can improve your practice and technique, shoot us a question on Instagram at Stranger Liquids.